every once in a while when you meet people in uh, these progressive circles and political circles, you meet truly extraordinary people, and Lewis is one of those. He's a mentor, he's a connector, he's a community leader, a community organizer. He's one of those people that um, helps make this world a better place and helps us get through this very, very trying time uh, with grace, with dignity, and with hope, and the firm conviction that our persistent efforts will bring the positive change we want and will help us build the civilization we want to be able to pass on to the future. There's a lot of information here about Lewis that I, I'm not going to read to you because you can all do that. He's a Washington native and um, has been working on social equity issues and community organizing. I, what, s since you can walk? Yeah. <laughs> And I think what I want to point out to everyone in this room, because I know how much we all really enjoy supporting solid candidates, Lewis is running for Snohomish County Council. Mm -hmm. Woo! It will be a distinct pleasure to help his campaign with, um, in whatever way we can. I, we just love to help. Yeah. <laughs> so, with that, Lewis Harris. So I want to um, start by saying thank you to all of you for being in this room. Um, you know, the, the work of changing the world starts with everyone. So uh, everyone in this room, I just would like to, y'all to give yourselves a hand of applause and I'd like to join you. Now. So, um, so I, I thank you for the uh, for the gracious introduction. Uh, my name is Lewis Harris. I, was, um, I, I'm a, I'm a, I like the light. I like the light. No, but, um, but uh, my name is Lewis Harris. Um, I am currently the vice president of the Snohomish County chapter of the NAACP, um, and I'm also the former chair of the Snohomish County Young Democrats. Um, and I, I'm here to talk to you all today about um, a topic that I know. Um, some of y'all have heard floated um, as you all are kind of uh, engulfed in the progressive circles and the, the change that happens around progressive action, um, and that's allyship. Uh, so I, I kind of want to have this be like a, a conversation because I don't want to just talk to y'all. I, I, I'm a big person for experiential learning, and so um, the conversation certainly helps that. And so, so with that, um, does anybody want to take a shot at what allyship is? Any you? I know I, I don't mean to put y'all on the spot, but that is what I'm here to tell you, but um, I want to start from where you all are at. So, yeah, please. So, recognizing that I'm a privileged white middle class person who hasn't had much of any barriers in life, but being a person with a moral conscience, I am endeavoring to walk with people who are less privileged and listen to their voices. And um you know um is there anybody else that wants to take a stab at that or take a shot or try to understand? Okay. So um that is that's absolutely right. Um and I think ally is allyship is a it's a it's a grassroots thing. It's something that really is um, a changing thing because um, in this world of uh, you know progressive action and social justice, being organic and having the ability to um, to shape your action is just really important. At least that's um, from my experience. And so um, I have a a definition of allyship that I'd like to share with you all. Um, an ally is someone who whose personal commitment to fighting oppression and prejudice is reflected in willingness to educate oneself about different identities and experiences, challenge one's discomfort and prejudices, learn and practice the skills of being an ally, and take action to create interpersonal, societal, and institutional change. Okay. And so, how does, where do you really start with allyship? I, I, and, I, and I'm not really sure where everyone is in this room in terms of being an ally. I don't know if everybody in this room wants to be an ally. Um, I just know that it's my job to help bridge the divide between folks of color and folks of non-color because I'm a mixed individual. And so, so that's, what I, that's what I'm doing. Um, and so, so really the starting place for becoming an ally 
um, is understanding some of the cultural perspectives that are out there. Um, these are just kind of some things that I came up with off the top of my head um, as, as some perspectives that are out there when it comes to different races um, and, and the different races. And so um, one thing that I, I'd like folks to, at least in my experience, understand is that you know, obviously there's, there's a myriad of different cultures out there, whether Hispanic, um, Asian, Pacific Islander, there's so many, right? Um, and a, a lot of times I hear, you know, folks say, okay, why is it always African American or black and white? Um, and, and what I, what my answer to that is, is because in the, the duality of life, there's, there's the two extremes, right? You got black and you got white, it's the yin and yang, and then everything in between, um, is, it exists in between, right? And so, so that, so that's one of the reasons why I see um, the those two as like the primary topic of racial tension. Um, and so, so I, does anybody have any questions about this slide or any thoughts on it? Or there's just so much to unpack. There is. There's so much to learn. Mm -hmm. That's right. There, there absolutely is. Um, and so, and I know you, uh, you're, you're definitely an ally in the space, and that's why I, I you know, try <laughs> to learn to be one. Right, right, and it, it's, yeah. it's one on, of those. On a path. Yeah, well, and, and it's, it's always a moving journey, right? Um, I, allyship really um, is something that people of color need, um, but they don't. The, it's difficult to say when someone of uh, an underrepresented uh, group says that they need something, right? Sometimes what they need is space. Sometimes what they need is um, just understanding. Um, they don't always need a, a hand up. Sometimes they just need you to recognize that, um, that they are working to get to a place that they want to be, you know what I mean? And so allyship is really being able to navigate um, kind of the social and the, the psychological um, barriers and uh, issues that people deal with. So. The other part of being an ally is is really um, accepting your social identity. Uh, I, you know, uh, like, I, what was your name? I'm Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane. Um, you know, you, you started perfectly. You know, I'm a white middle uh, woman who uh, middle class woman um, with with not so many barriers to that white. You know, that's that is that is the perfect way to start um, in identifying yourself in the world. Um, I identify as an African American mixed race um, male who's also uh, handicapped and gay. So, so I have I have I always have to start from that space um, in the world of advocacy and social justice because um, if I if I don't know who I am, then how can I help other people? You know, and I think that that's that's why it's so very important. Um, one, does anybody have any issues or any thoughts about that? About accepting your social identity or kind of identifying yourself, I know that um, I know that it's 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 interesting to um, see how other people identify you, right? Um, we don't always know, like by the face, who is what or um, or what somebody identifies as. You know, um, colorism is a thing that I'm sure you all have heard. There's, uh, there's Hispanic races, African American, um, races all over the world that, that identify each other based on the, the lightness of their skin color, right? Um, and so uh, if, you, if, if that is the, the measure of someone's worth in the world, then, then we must be getting it wrong, right? As, as individuals, as people, as folks who have um, you know, heuristics of thought, if you will. And so one thing that really helps to um, to identify uh, what someone's identity is, is uh, by understanding uh, the economic data to understand criminal justice data and educational standards um, and the historical narrative. So, so I feel like I'm kind of talking to the choir a little bit. <laughs> I feel like y'all are like, you kind of know some of this and stuff, but the reality is, is that um, if you don't know, um, the, the best way to understand is to look at data. Right, I'm I'm someone who is very grounded in research, and somebody who uh, who values um, data as a means of telling what's going on, um, and and so economic data is huge. Uh, you know, barriers uh, to uh, housing access, like in Seattle and other places, um, in the in, during the civil rights movement and before then, 
uh, criminal justice uh, as you know in the school prison pipeline, the disparate rates of incarceration for uh, youth of color, um, as well as you know educational standards, you know uh, graduation rates and all of those things. I think you might have left one off, and that is cultural. Yeah. And um, uh, as the Cherokee Nation has pointed out to Dr. Warren, that uh, yeah. <laughs> it is a cultural thing to be a Cherokee, not just a blood thing. Mm -hmm. right. Well, and, and, and that's absolutely right. But uh, some people would say that, you know, culture is... It, that's not like that's not data. You know what I mean? Cultural is like a quant, uh, a qualitative thing, right? Um, because there's 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 ways of measuring culture, um, whether you're talking about food, whether you're talking about dance and art and whatnot. Um, but culture is not something that you can really. Um, I mean, you could if you wanted to get creative. You you could if you wanted to be creative. And, um, but but there, that's an opportunity in in allies is to create some of that some of that space sort of to identify people. I bring it up because I think it's important for us to understand that that's one of the things that creates our barriers to our understanding of each other. That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, and and that's why that's why that's what that's what I mean about this is is understanding not only your identity but understand somebody else's identity, um, whether through the lens of culture. The the reality is is that um, hate uh, exists because of ignorance, in my opinion. Um, the only reason that we don't um, like something or we don't resonate with something is because we haven't had exposure to it. Um, and, and that's something I fundamentally believe. So um, in understanding allyship, some a couple of things that uh, being in the social justice spaces uh, that I've seen, um, I've heard, uh, and that I always offer as suggestions in being an ally because the as a person of color, the whole reason that I'm having this conversation is I was asked to to provide a perspective of um, you know a person of color in social justice in Snohomish County today, right? And so um, I, I do see that Snohomish County and you know the greater Western Washington um, region is fairly progressive when it comes to diversity, inclusion, and equity, um, which is a great thing because I look at the rest of the country and I see that there are definitely some gaps. Um, and so one of the things though about, um, about our, our progressiveness um, in the space of social justice um, is that we need to understand how, um, how to show up if we don't know already. Um, and, uh, and so these are some of, the, some of the things that I thought of that would be helpful in, um, in understanding how to be a good ally. Uh, does anybody here have an experience as an ally where you uh, you thought you were doing the right thing and it came off completely wrong. <laughs> I would like to share that with me. Like, tell me tell me your experience. I mean, it'd be great to really hear that. Yeah. So I, I kind of had the, the experience in reverse. So can I be the reverse experience? Of yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm oftentimes in many spaces the only person of color, many see as women, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, one of the things that well-intentioned white folks especially can do is um, by pitching their helping, actually trying to speak for me. Right. Speak. And, and that's one of the things where I often see this a lot, even, and it's usually well-intentioned, it just comes off like, usually it's, it's kind of trying to, um, like, um, some, some folks can think that advocating for a person of color means trying to speak for them yeah. and trying to protect them. Mm -hmm. And so that's been my experience in some of the social circles in Seattle, especially. Yeah. Yeah. And um, sometimes we just need someone to actually just be quiet and listen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, like know the space and be humble are, are two of the things that not every activist around here practices. Exactly. And um, yeah, and, and that can be frustrating because you know I understand they want to help, but at the same time it can come off as being um, very um, ignorant. Yeah. And um, I think sometimes even for myself as another person of color, mm -hmm. sometimes I even step back because it's not always about being the loudest voice in the room. Mm -hmm. It's about letting that person have the space to be themselves Absolutely. and standing with them instead of trying to be their savior. Exactly. 
Well, I mean, I could, I could tell too much about it. Yeah. I really can. Um, you know, uh, it's interesting. So, so I, my background's in psychology and sociology. So I'm very attuned to, to kind of the, the social cues and the way people talk with one another. Um, and, and I'm at tables, you know, with with you know uh, leaders in the community, municipal leaders and stuff like that. And so, um, it's really interesting to see the folks who who understand their power but don't want to use it to help someone else. Um, that that's the that's that's the opportunity for for um, allies is to to not speak for other folks but to use your power know your power use your power and then use it to open the space for folks who don't have that same power and so like um, let me think about this so we so the the the, um, the example coming to mind is I did a um, I did a six month uh, community task force with the city of Linwood. Um, it was the city of Linwood is actually fairly progressive um, in terms of their diversity and inclusion. Um, but when you what the the task force was looking at communities of color and then police and seeing where the bridge uh, to to um, understanding exists. Um, and this was around the time when uh, Black Lives Matter was really coming to the height, and there was a lot of police killings. And so, um, so being at those tables and being um, in those spaces. Uh, there would oftentimes be, um, you know, a person of color like uh, like one of my mentors who who's a bit more soft spoken um, and doesn't and for her what she said didn't um, didn't carry throughout the room um, and then everybody knew that it didn't carry but they just let the next person talk instead of creating the space to say hey I didn't hear you could you just repeat that or um, um, you know, or could you just repeat that one more time? You know, it, it just creating the space instead of just kind of, you know, glazing over and saying, hey, um, what you had to say was important. I want to hear it. Can you say it again? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think what Alicia brought up is really important because I think a lot of people don't realize that they're doing that, mm -hmm. white people. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's good to, to learn mm -hmm. and Right, and and I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but in uh, one of the things that is also an opportunity is understanding where the burden of responsibility lies. Right? Does the burden of responsibility for um, lie on people of color to let uh, um, people of non-color know? I don't I don't think in every situation it is, but I think that there are certain spaces where that does exist. Yes, like this space in general. Like this is an open space where we can have this conversation. Sometimes out in the community, or out in other social groups, or um, you know, positions where I mean, in places where there's power and stuff, um, those aren't really the best spaces for that. Um, and and it's it's and so it's really important as an ally to kind of understand, like, do that pre work for yourself, um, and and go out in the world with that understanding. Um, and 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 that's really the opportunity for allyship. I, I speak. I really speak optimistically because uh, I'm. I am. As I said, I'm very. Um, I'm proud of the work that you all are doing, um, and I'm really glad to see that you all are sticking with it. Um, this is not the first time I spoke at, at this group, so so I'm just glad to see the growth and everything going on. Um, but but um, it really does start with yourself. Um, and, and that actually goes across the board for people of color too, um, that we all have to do the internal work to be better people so that, so that we can make the world a better place. So I could give another example of um, going to Olympia for um, Poverty Action Day, mm -hmm. which is always on uh, Martin Luther King holiday. Mm -hmm. And um, we, I'm from the 46th district, we usually have lots of people. and. Um, because I've been down there a lot, in fact, I used to be a um, lobbyist for alcohol and drug treatment, um, I know my way around the campus, but I don't have a powerful story to tell about poverty, homelessness, being incarcerated, that kind of, you know, 
that what is relevant to the day's agenda. So I we gather all the people, maybe 20 people from the district, and ha I have everybody go around the room and say what got them there, what their you know what their passion was that got them to come to Olympia at that hour, and then try to pick out the most powerful stories of life experience in the room. And my job for that day with those legislators is to make sure that those stories are heard. And my voice doesn't need to be heard. I hear that. I hear that. In 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 the in the context of what you're speaking, yes. You know, you have you have a limited time with these legislators. You want to make sure the impact is felt by them and so you want to make sure that the, the voices um, that, that have the most resonance are heard. I, I, and and I, I agree with that. Um, but you know, on the ground level, your, your, your story does matter as well. You're, you're somebody who served those communities um, and, and you've seen, you've, you've heard the stories that other people tell, you know what I mean? So, so that, that gives you even more power to, to be able to speak um, if they're not there to speak, to speak uh, I, don't, I hate to say speak for them, but it, I mean, if, if they can't be there, um, then you don't get off the hook. Yeah, yeah, you, you can you can speak for them, really. Um, um, it's always good to get get their permission to speak for them, of course. Um, sometimes we don't always have the opportunity to do that, but it's 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 good to get that permission. Mm -hmm. Andy, how do you think? Um, I part of my um, journey, and particularly in the last few years, has been to recognize that a lot of the uh, adaptations I've made to deal with my innate social awkwardness um, are really ineffective in this arena because I had developed a pattern of listening to a person, hearing their story, and then trying to find something in my experience that was somehow connected. Mm. And for a lot of these histories that I'm hearing, there is nothing in my experience at all. And to suggest that there is, is um, uh, really inappropriate. Mm. And uh, it's been challenging for me to find a path where I can listen and try to learn where I can be useful, figure out a way to be useful. Um, I think as much as anything, I, I agree entirely, it's, it's not up to, um, people who already have enough struggles in their life to then sit down and tell me what I can do to be useful. But it is also a, a challenge on my end uh, since this entire political networking arena is a place I've avoided <laughs> all my life. I, I think I gravitated to science because it's yeah. very clean cut and I can manage it quite well and we only talk about yeah. very, very clear crystalline issues. Uh, moving into this arena, trying to figure out a path for, for hearing and then becoming useful is, is really challenging. Well, the, and it, plenty of mistakes to be made. I, I, I agree, um, because there's there's one thing that we, we kind of joke about in social justice circles, it's the, um, it's the, uh, Oppression Olympics or something like that, you know, where like you know, it's it's because like you know, I'm not only a gay, black, um, you know, uh, handicapped man, and you know, comparing my experience to somebody else makes me more oppressed. You know, it's it's not about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like um, the, but um, you do have. You, I mean, as a woman, um, you know, you have a, a story of oppression that can that can create the understanding. To better to better um, empathize with someone who's of color or LGBTQ or something like that. That's that's the that is where that's where intersectionality really exists. Um, is is because um, you can find things that that um, that are socially unacceptable or socially not what everybody's doing or um, you know insert other words there for that. But the reality is is that um, it's those things that unify us. And, and it's it's uh, it's seeing that and using that to say I, I hear you, you know, and and truly mean that, you know what I mean? Um, that that creates the, the empathy or the, the, the space for listening, um, and that's important, you know, it really is. I wanted to to add on to what you had said a bit in, in the spirit of knowing your power and sharing your power. Mm -hmm. 
the role of uh, folks um, to amplify, yep. you know, as transparently and as cleanly as possible, but you know, the the voices that need to be heard. I mean, just telling the story to more people makes makes a big difference. Absolutely. But and and then the, about social awkwardness and in all these situations, you know. We deal with two different kinds of discrimination and hate in the world in a sense. One is institutional, from coming from just the structures of how our day-to-day -day lives exist, but it's also person to person. Yeah. And overcoming hate ultimately has, the, some two people have to look each other in the eye and, and be able to speak to each other without killing each other. You Absolutely. Know? And, uh, well, that's awkward. Yeah, <laughs> it, and you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, and I think that that's what we as a country really need to get to, um, especially with our conservative counterparts. Is is that we like like there needs to be a social um, a social uh, contract that says it's okay to disagree. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, until we have that, you know, there's just going to be rampant disrespect to one another. Um, did you see the, the questioning of, by the Muslim House of Representatives new member yes. for Elliot Abrams? Yes. Did you see what, well, yeah. And, you know, really extreme kinds of questions. What was your comment on the appropriateness in that place of power where she was being asked? And you're talking about when she was questioning that one gentleman about uh, the, the United States' um, involvement in What he's South done America. in the past and yeah. all the horrible things. And, 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 can you repeat and the question part of that? Just what is your opinion on the, you know, the appropriateness of those place, you know, power where she was doing this? I, um, does that need to be done or is that something it, that... It's a, I'd actually, well, so my personal opinion is she did, she did right. You know, she, she yeah. questioned... Yes. She she questioned. Uh, I mean, that's that is the whole opportunity of today and going forward is that we're actually pe putting people in place to question like some of these motives and some of the things that yeah. these folks have been doing for a long time. You know, I um, uh, and I know that a lot of people in here um, uh, also resonate with this statement. But you know, the, the only reason the only reason we need to spend so much money on the the military is because we've created enemies throughout the world. Um, and, if, and if we had a better flying policy, um, you know, we might be able to save some money there. You know what I mean? Um, and, and so, so yeah, but, oh yeah, and, I mean, and thank you. Um, but the, and that's the reality is that, you know, getting, getting these progressive candidates in places to, to actually um, speak truth to the power and the way things have been doing and to help change it is, is instrumental. And that's why I love what this group is doing. I just I wanted to add another layer to this discussion um, and just talk about how I am I believe in that all people people who disagree with us have the potential to be allies. Absolutely. So I would like to also just introduce the idea that every person we speak to is it could be an ally yes. if we learn to help them understand these issues that we that we want to call people in, yes. not out. Yes. So we don't want to shine a light on people and shame people. We want to help them understand what they don't know. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and I 100% I and what that really um, what what that really looks like is extending the olive branch. Mm -hmm. I hate using yeah. cliches, but that that's what it is. The reason, and I have a, a perfect example of this. Um, so uh, I so I was uh, one of the top four recipients of the top four um, recognized for emerging leader in the Herald Business Journal uh, last year. Um, I was there uh, with with four other folks. One of them being um, a council member who is uh, pretty, which is, is he's, I mean, he's the treasurer. He was the treasurer for the Republicans. He's very conservative. Um, it, before that, um, I I kind of saw him as that, um, as somebody who is diametrically opposed to who I am. Um, you know, my organization we we created a resolution for safe injection sites to support them. Um, shortly thereafter, that specific person. Um, created a ban in County, King County, I mean, Snohomish County for those. Um, and so he was kind of a person that I was like, okay, well, you know, like, you know, he's just somebody who's done much to opposed to me, right? Um, it was after that that I actually extended the Olive Branch, and we've been building a relationship, and now he's wanting to come to social justice circles and better understand um, social justice and the, the, the plight of marginalized communities, um, which, you know, um, traditionally I wouldn't have seen him as somebody who would actually 
Um, and so it, it is really um, bringing people in and uh, kind of being the light of, of the possibility of community for other folks. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, I was gonna just um, uh, point out this uh, uh, kind of conundrum that you get into with uh, people who have been um, like your opponents on whatever situation, whether it's you know political opponent, and maybe it's not even necessarily uh, about parties. Maybe it's just people in the same party who are on an opposite side of an issue. And, uh, and so you sort of have this assumption that you're like an opponent of that person. Exactly. But then uh, sometime later, you find that, you know, you, you have a different circumstance where you end up uh, agreeing on something. Uh, and uh, and then suddenly you know suddenly your allies on that particular point mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean necessarily that you now abandon everything else that right. you were opposed on so it's like it's sort of situational it kind of goes back and forth sure. depending on the, the situation and you know I think that's just human nature you know you can agree on who likes blue and who likes green and who likes red and who likes white and you know different people like different colors or different um, you know um, you know type different foods it doesn't mean that you have to always like everything the same you know you can be different so it's so just kind of a but as James Baldwin would have said if, if your if your belief uh, involves the the belief that my right to exist uh, isn't there then. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. But, but, but I mean, that's how you—that's how you can manage to um, yeah. break through. That is that situationally, sometimes, you know, you might have agreement yeah. and you know, and willing I, to do that. And speaking to that, like what, like one thing that I—I'm I, a universalist in nature. Like I believe that like, love is underlying everything that we want in life, um, and it's part of happiness. Like uh, that's that's something that, like. I mean, if you, I mean, that is, that's a unifying factor, right? There's some unifying factors out there like love, food, um, you know, sleep, you know, you know, some of those basic necessities, happiness, um, you know, the pursuit of liberty, um, that's, that gets a little mucky, but, but the reality is, is that we, there's, there's things that we all want. Um, and if you can learn to, to, to hone in on that with someone, then you, you will create a connection that can blossom into understanding issues and, and advocating and on yeah. um, I don't know how much time I have left. Um, we're, about, we're about to. Okay, perfect. Um, if there's no other questions, I would like to say thank you. Yeah. <laughs>